Okay, we're live and recorded. Hi, Heather, thanks for coming. All right, uh, we'll just call the meeting to order at 6.09 on Tuesday, Wednesday, sorry, July 7th. Um, Mitchell Business Improvement Area. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at the agenda? We're looking at just three members here, so we're gonna be a pretty tight squeeze to get a few things in, but it is um, kind of an important meeting tonight. So everyone had a chance to look at the agenda? Any questions, concerns, anything they want to add? Nope, vote to accept the agenda. First and second, Bert and Heather, okay. Um, we've got pecuniary interest. If you find yourselves in a pickle along the way, just uh, speak up. Heather, are you struggling? Oh, you're muted, you're muted. Oh, we lost her. What did we miss? Okay, we lost her, Bert. So we're just going to move on. Uh, pecuniary interest. If you find yourself in a in a pickle, we'll just uh, you can just wave your wave your white flag on our way through. Um, did everyone have a chance to look at the minutes of the June second, two thousand and twenty one meeting? Questions, concerns, additions? No. Okay. Uh, motion to accept the minutes of the June second meeting. Heather, then Bert. All in favor? All right. Any business arising from it? Any questions, concern? I think I said that already. So, all right, we're going to move into our tourism officer. Such a fancy word, Ashley. <laughs> oh. So impressive. So fancy. Good evening, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Um, I have a few things I'll go through quickly here since we have the, a smaller group. And as always, Trish will send you the hard copy following the meeting. So to start our Housing Our Future, Inspiring Solutions and Innovative Approaches um, Housing Forum took place on June 23rd, and we think it was a success. This was a housing forum that was solution-based, focusing on alternative and innovative approaches to market housing needs for attracting and retaining the workforce in Perth County. Um, it was a virtual event that featured local and provincial planning tools, best practices, and real-world examples of innovation in action, including a keynote presentation by Dr. A.B. Friedman, um, which helped send attendees away a vision of what is possible when communities work together. So we had over 60 participants spend the morning engaging with presenters, including the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, um, Sarah Kipkar, who built Windsor's first tiny home, Denise Amersfoort from Huron County, who led the development of a housing-friendly lens project, and uh, Perth County's very own planner, Susanna Reed. Attendees included municipal staff, developers, real estate professionals, home builders, and community partners from across the region. Um, like I said, this forum went well, and it's what we're considering the first in a series of activities uh, around workforce engagement and attraction through the county's economic development and tourism division. The next one has a little bit to do with you guys. It's the Snapshot Program. So the Perth County Snapshot Program was a campaign we put on that allowed businesses and business organizations to receive free professional photography to aid their recovery efforts, um, assist with their digital marketing and whatever marketing needs they may have. So this program saw 47 businesses and business organizations receive free digital photography packages um, we delivered this community collaboration project through grant funding received through Digital Main Street, Communitech, and FedDev Ontario. So photographers are currently working with businesses across the county and will be throughout the rest of the summer to get all of these photo shoots done as people are reopening and getting their hair done and want their photo taken. Um, and the Mitchell BIA is one of the recipients of these photography packages, which Trish might speak to later on. Next, we're reminding people about the Ontario by Bike program as cycle tourism 
is an emerging priority for us, as well as for Destination Stratford, the town of St. Mary's, as well as many neighboring regions uh, who we're collaborating with. So we have teamed up with Stratford and St. Mary's to join Ontario by Bike and introduce the expansion of its bicycle friendly business certification network and how to tap into the growing market of cycle tourism. Interested businesses in Perth County and Stratford and St. Mary's uh, because we joined the program can now register as cycle friendly for free. And this comes with a plethora of benefits, uh, a great listing on the Ontario by bike map, a higher Google listing, uh, lots of different things. So if anyone's interested in more information on that, or you think your business could be a good fit for being certified as bicycle friendly, feel free to shoot me a message and I can send you some more information on it, or you can read up on it yourself at ontariobybike.ca. Next, the Diversity, Equity, and Anti-Racism Charter. So Perth County Council adopted this new Diversity, Equity, and Anti-Racism Charter on June 17th. The charter was uh, the culmination of seven months of work and community consultation to develop the draft for council approval. The public process included surveys, virtual roundtables, and one-on-one -on -one stakeholder interviews. The community was also given the opportunity to review the draft prior to adoption by council. The charter provides a framework and lens through which Perth County can act by outlining nine key principles and values relating to diversity, equity, and anti-racism, as well as highlighting the role of the Corporation of the County of Perth as a policymaker, employer, service provider, purchaser of goods, uh, and community partner. So anyone interested in learning more about the charter development process or more about the charter can check that out at perthcounty.ca slash charter. On a similar note, we're reminding businesses about our welcoming communities training. So we are able to offer this free unique training opportunity to Perth County employers. The goal of the training is to help our local businesses and service providers become welcoming to all newcomers to the region. So together with our partners at Fanshawe's Corporate Training Solutions and Intercultural Competency Advantage Program, we're looking forward to ensuring the online learning experience is easy to access and as meaningful as possible. I think it was the winter of 2019 that we offered this training in person um, I believe it was at Trillium and Listwall. There was a Mitchell seminar uh, that a few Mitchell BIA members attended. And it was a course that went over really well. So if you or anyone you know is interested in taking it now online, uh, it's at your own pace and it's just as meaningful from the people who have taken it is the feedback we've gotten. You can again reach out to myself or you can email ecdev at perthcounty.ca with your business name and we will get you set up for however many licenses you would like for that uh, training for your employees. Next is an exciting announcement about PC Connect, our transit system. We're pleased to share that the Government of Ontario has extended the PC Connect project funding for an additional two years beyond the 2023 project end date. So we'll have this transit system in Perth County until at least 2025, which is great. And at this time, as always, Perth County is operating with the necessary COVID-19 precautions, which includes 50% reduced capacity and increased sanitization practices. As um, we move into further stages, as the summer progresses, we're looking forward to Finally, being able to really market and promote the transit system, which is something we really haven't been able to do much of since launch. So we're excited to uh, be able to really start encouraging people to take advantage of that. Part of that uh, process is our um, working on to continuously enhance the PC Connect customer experience one of which will involve a booking and tracking application that will be coming soon. So hopefully at our next meeting, I'll have an update for you guys on the new PC Connect app. 
And my last update is something that I've been working on that lots of that has been lots of fun. I saw Jeff down at the petting zoo when we were doing this uh, this week, which is our new Discover More Adventures program. So we are working with an experiential tourism specialist as well as a professional photographer and videographer to develop signature experiences throughout the county that when restrictions are lifted and people are looking for things to get out of their house and do, um, we want there to be a wide range of different options to, to get out into Perth County and try something new at our businesses. Uh, we are working with eight signature experiences right now, and the first experience will be launching next week. So watch our social media pages for that. And throughout the summer, fall and winter, these experiences will continue to launch. Um, and hopefully you'll hear about this on social media, the radio, um, through all different kinds of advertising means. And uh, yeah, it's a project I'm really excited to launch next week and stay tuned for more on the Discover More Adventures program. That's it for me. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to take them now. Awesome. Thanks, pretty, pretty self-explanatory and these guys can uh, certainly reach out to you if they have any questions. Thanks very much, Ashley. Um, I think next here, sorry, I lost my agenda. Well, Jeff Frick, welcome back from holidays. Did you bring, bring us back anything good? Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Is my sound well, good? Yep. You know, when, uh, a parent, when a parent goes on holidays, it always brings his children back gifts. Did you bring yeah. us anything good? Yeah, I brought back a uh, uh, fish, which has already been eaten. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I've been back for two weeks. I can say that, you know, uh, um, it defies all the laws of uh, astrophysics, but I think it's been a full moon every day since I've come back, or at least that's what it feels like in the office. Um, but uh, I think it's just a sign that we're all ready to emerge and get to the next stage. So um, uh, I think people are excited, but there's lots of questions. So I will include that in my update. So I have a few matters I wanna provide quick updates on. Um, the first one is that the municipal office tender is out. The tenders uh, for a new municipal office for the municipality of West Perth close on uh, Wednesday, July the 14th. At 2 p.m., it'll be a public opening and we'll make a decision from there about whether we're going to proceed with the project. We have every indication that it's gonna be a good competitive uh, bidding process. We've got lots of generals and uh, we've had good site meetings and um, we're feeling good about it, but you'll only find out what it is likely to cost you when you go to the market. So please stay tuned for that. And it's exciting for the BIA because I think it's a big project for, for um, the municipality of West Perth, but it also uh, will lay out the future for meeting spaces and all kinds of things that are supports for the community that um, are very um, uh, needed. Secondly, um, uh, in relate to municipal office, I just want to mention that the municipality is um, adding community space into the municipal office. And if we do go ahead and make the decision to proceed with the addition of community space in the new municipal office, we will take the logical next step and begin the process of disposing of the Friendship Center property. The municipality has passed a resolution to consider it surplus. The 850 square feet of programming space that's in that building is built into the new municipal uh, office as a publicly accessible, um, completely no ramps or stairs, uh, accessibility standard space. And um, that would be the next logical thing. We would anticipate hanging on to the parking lot. And, um, and uh, we also presume we're, we're considering whether we would uh, to make another lot addition to another property there to help with some parking in one of our core area businesses. So we're looking at those options and we'll be coming back uh, as the summer moves on, but the first decision is whether council is going to proceed with the building. On a related note, when I brought up parking, and I, I'm going to let Trish say more about this as the meeting goes on, I think she's going to mention in her update, but uh, we are bringing some minor changes to the parking bylaw, 
and uh, we are going to ask council to approve a couple of minor what I would call um, very um, kind of operational changes that we just had a couple of errors in our bylaw that we want to clean up but we're also going to file with council a full um, uh, set of changes to the parking bylaws just modernize it a bit and I think we want a little input from the BIA about what the number they would like for parking on the downtown is and I, I think it's a great joy and a great um, a great asset for a community to have free parking and it's downtown I I fed a meter in a neighboring town this morning and uh, almost got a ticket and um, um, I think you know you forget that some places have to pay for parking. And um, and so, but we also wanna know just how many hours is the right number on the street so that we don't encourage business owners to be parking in front of their businesses and working. And then we want those hopefully kept for uh, customers. And then that'll bring in the decision discussion of how many hours uh, we set up the parking for the Friendship Center lot, which I frankly see as a really good overflow lot for downtown businesses to park their employees and not have to park in front of their building. Um, so that's just, uh, Trish can say a little more about that when it gets to her. Um, we are ordering new banners and a number of new flags for the municipality through the Main Street, Street program. And I want to just mention, that I know this will come up later, that um, we can support the um, project of uh, the uh, uh, wraps for the polls if the BIA chooses to proceed with that. Um, it's not lost on me that there's only three members on tonight and you need four for a quorum um, and that's disappointing but I think if the members that are present would like to give an indication of their support for the wrap program and if council supports it uh, when councils asked, I think that we'd have enough momentum sort of three for three and expecting that we'd get the one more that we could we could order. And I think we might have to make that executive decision in this case, because I think not ordering is gonna lose the opportunity for some financial support from the municipality because I've got to spend our money by the middle to the end of July. So I'm just gonna share that with you that you can consider if you wanna pass a sort of definitive resolution that you would like to proceed and then we'll figure out how we manage that resolution when we have it, even though you can't make it an official resolution until your next meeting when you have quorum or until the next meeting when you have quorum. Um, you may have noticed if you've been driving through town that the operations department has done a great job in uh, replacing the service club signs. So the service club signs are being replaced. They're long overdue for replacement. Um, they've worked that project in with some of our own manufacturing between jobs and um, we'll be proceeding with that. So I just wanna to mention to the BIA that in the next few months or sooner, we'll be reaching out to service clubs about getting us a new sign. And then we'll want to consider what our policy for those signs is. And you know, for example, does the service club sign uh, have enough space that we could say, you know, Mitchell BIA and uh, and put it put a uh, put a what do we call this thing? Kristen would have to tell me put one of these on it so that people can stop at that sign and get a huge amount of information about the municipality. So QR code. Uh, yes, QR code. So um, we'll be working away at that, so you can look forward to that coming. Um, I want to mention that we are looking forward to moving to the next stage and I, I certainly we want to support our business owners as they move to the next stage and we realize that they've been through a hell of a lot more than we have but uh, we're looking forward to getting to the next stage as well. Um, we will be um, looking at plans for allowing the resumption of in-person meetings uh, when the threshold numbers come to be the right number. Um, I think we will always have some kind of a hybrid approach from now on, given that uh, I think a lot of people have grown accustomed to it. And we have a lot of people who watch our council meetings and our committee meetings between meetings. And I think that's a, 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 ni a nice lesson. Um, we will also be looking at how we proceed with opening our office. And I would anticipate that um, 
we'll continue to try to support our businesses with with retweeting and providing information as it becomes available and support um, businesses. We're really trying to be very careful about not clogging up the information pipeline um, with us retweeting stuff that people can get from the Huron Perth uh, Public Health. But at the same time, there are cases where very um, precise or surgical sort of communications um, are warranted. And, and we just don't want to communicate for the sake of having chatter. We want to communicate where there's value added. And Kristen has uh, been looking after our social media accounts and doing a great job of it. And, and uh, so you'll see us try to, you know, try to support but not overwhelm as we continue to have this major exchange of information. We lost Bert. I'm going to keep going though. I'll, I'll call him tomorrow. Um, day camps. I want to just mention that the uh, uh, YMCA is not offering day camps in Mitchell this year. And I, I want to take this opportunity to give a tremendous shout out to our recreation coordinator, Abby Hemstock, and our recreation and facilities manager, uh, Darcy Cook, who have worked very hard to hire staff and run day camps in Mitchell. The numbers that we have 24 campers this week, we have basically 24 to 30 campers for most of the camps throughout the summer. That's 24 families that can be in Mitchell with their children or at least 24 kids and you know maybe 12 families or 15 families, whatever the number is, um, that can have that service locally and it's no small feat for us to to introduce that service and run it. And we think it's a very important part of making West Perth a, a community, a better community. And um, and so I just, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention how much work that's been for Darcy and for um, Abby and then all the other supports in the organization. Uh, we think the Y ran about 12 spaces in Mitchell per year. And I think that 24 number is just an indication that there's a lot of penned up anxiety to get back to normal. And we're happy that we can move in and fill that space. And we see that as a long-term program for West Perth. Um, last one, and, and perhaps not least, you may have noticed um, our last couple of little announcements. You may have noticed if you've been over to the, uh, to the um, ball diamonds that uh, we are taking down the Agriculture Society barns. That project's being done with the full cooperation of the Agricultural Society. And um, we have uh, lots of confidence that we'll be coming up with some kind of an alternative um, plan to replace the space that's being lost with the old barns. The old barns are past their useful life. Um, we're taking them down um, to make way for a new project. And uh, on the note of make way for a new project, um, you can stay tuned for West Perth social media channels tomorrow because we will have a very, very exciting, cool announcement to make. The advocate beat you to it. Yeah, they've already put it out. I didn't get a chance to tell council yet. No, so. it's on Twitter. It's on Twitter. The advocate, okay. the advocate uh, shouted that out about two hours ago on Mitchell Advocate on Twitter. So but it's you know. still exciting, and we're still waiting. I'm thrilled. I'm so, absolutely thrilled. So my 10 minute update, nine minutes of pure joy in that last minute, I just got the pins knocked out. From Sorry, I, I knew, I, I yeah, I nope. saw it uh, before Good we got here and I was like- You should know by that. now how things leak so, out. So then I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I mean, I might as well tell the That's members fine. that are here because you have a lot of skin in the game. We are getting the Ketterson Park Pavilion project and we are getting the Ketterson Park uh, Recreational Accessible Trail project. They were the two highest ranked projects that were on our Kedderson Park master plan. And um, they are going to make our community, um, they're gonna improve our community immensely again. And I'm mentioning it to the BIA because I believe that there is a significant economic spinoff from being able to have these, um, to have these uh, very high quality facilities that we can attract things like the Canadian softball championships and those kinds of uh, events, which will have hundreds of thousand dollars of spinoff in them. And we can calculate the spinoff for you. It's remarkable. And so this is a step forward in our recreation and a step forward in the business of our community. So, so there. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I, I felt I, I was... Oh, no, I'm glad you I, mentioned it. If it's out, we might as well say it. It's, it's, it's out, yeah. I'm, so, well, fortunately, unfortunately, it was excited well, for a big, uh, a big... A big drum roll announcement. But. Yeah, I do want to say this to uh, to Councillor Bell, who is also your chair, and to the members. The reason I'm being a little bit cagey about it is that um, the federal government and provincial government didn't announce it to us, but it's it's on their websites. And so we found out today from the media, and I had to call the media to see if I could find out what was going on. So we figured we could fly under the radar for one more day while we put a press release together, but evidently not. Well. It's great news. I don't mind great is, news getting out there. Get her out. It is fantastic news. I'm I'm so excited. The more people we can get into our parks and playgrounds and areas, the better it is for our downtown businesses. Yeah. So if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And as I said, Trish, I think we'll circle back and talk a little bit about uh, the parking bylaw. And uh, there was one other, I think Chris will be, uh, I'm sorry, Trish will be getting some input from you on. I do have one question. On the uh, service group sign, um, some of those were new. Are they gonna are the newer ones going to be replaced, or do we have to go get new new signs again? Yeah, um, I think that uh, you can probably anticipate. I, I don't know the answer of where the old signs are sitting, but uh, pretty consistent with our normal approach. We don't throw anything out until we're sure we've got worked every last bit of use out of it. So I suspect that the operations staff have them, but I need to confirm that, Bert. Yeah, I know some of them are pretty old. I took down a couple of the, the ones that I know the groups I know that were belong to, but I know Rotary just installed new ones here like a year and a half or two years ago. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we presumably have hung on to those and there's some that we'll want to lose accidentally because they need to be replaced. But look, folks, here's the reality. Um, we know there's a square footage that's on that sign is more than what we need for service clubs anymore, which is sad, but it's like that in every community. And so we're going to have to figure out how we're going to use the space and how we can support the service clubs that are still rolling to promote on that space, but we'll also have some space for other things. No, nope, very good. Any other questions? Any other? I was just going to say anything else for Jeff. All right. Well, thanks. I on. apologize for waxing on. I'll get off now. It's totally fine. Totally fine. We have a short meeting tonight. We'll move. We'll move through quickly. I think here. Okay, Trish. Okay, um, so I've got the financial report up here in front of me. Um, not a whole lot to report on um, when it comes to the financials. I just will point out um, we haven't really spent any more in advertising um, because nothing's been going on as of yet. And um, you will see here community involvement. We're sitting at uh, the spent amount of 343802. Um, when I looked at the general ledger, though, I did notice that our bows that we purchased for downtown um, were expensed to that cost category. So I'm going to have them moved down a line to the downtown decorations where they should be. So I will get that change made. Other than that, I don't have a lot to touch on with the budget. Was there any questions about anything over the last little while? Um, another expense that's not in here is um, the... Skyline Studios invoice from our June concert. Um, I thought that was in here, but looking at the general ledger, it hasn't been added. So we're just waiting on that one expense. It will be expensed to June. It's just not on this report. Okay, if there's no questions, I will just move into my report. Um, so the Father's Day uh, concert statistics. So we had very low viewership this time live. We only had 38 um, peak viewers is um, what we peaked at somewhere along the line. So I opted to um, just leave it on the Facebook page, um, which the board was in agreement with. And we're now up to, as of today, 3,136 people have viewed it. So that could be that they've watched the entire concert or they've clicked on it and watched a part of it or kind of fast forwarded through it. So um, I think the reason that the, the viewership was so low was due to the fact that everything opened up on June 14th and it was a beautiful weekend. So I think people were just wanting to get outside. So that is still up there. So all of our concerts are up on our Facebook page. Anybody can view them at any given time. Um, downtown decorations. So we had ordered the red mesh bows from Floral Treasures to put up on the light standards. 
from St. David Street to St. George Street. So there's 15 light standards. We ordered 30 bows um, and we hung them two per pole. So they looked, they looked really nice. And as far as I know, um, they're all up except we might have one missing. So um, I will go take a peek at that just to make sure it's somewhere to be found. Um, and then the hope is, is they're going to stay up for the month of July and at the beginning of August, we'll take them down and reuse them again in November, December, um, when we hold our Christmas street party. Um, last meeting, we talked about an anti-stick, anti-graffiti wrap for the light standards in the BIA boundary. There's over 30 light um, and hydro poles of varying circumferences and, and materials. So some are wood, some are metal. Um, so due to these variations, um, tonight when I present the wrap sample, I would suggest that we just, if we pursue this project, that we would just wrap the, um, I'll call them dark gray light standards from St. David Street to St. George Street, which is the 15 we put the bows on. Um, they're all octagon shape and the same circumference. So it would just be a simple task to, to pursue. Um, so uh, the board members here tonight actually all seen the wrap and it's kind of a ribbed texture on the front and it's a peel and stick backing. So you would just peel it and then kind of like slowly stick it onto the pole and kind of even out any air bubbles or anything. Um, and the sample wrap that was given to me was five feet high. And so again, the members here tonight that saw the wrap um, like the five feet versus a four and a half feet. So um, if we bump it up to the five foot wrap, then we're looking at about $225 per wrap for a total of $33.75. Um, and again, as Jeff had mentioned, there is money from that Main Street Beautification Grant that um, they were willing to subsidize some of the cost for us. Um, so that is one option. Another option is, is the Stratford Chamber of Commerce had reached out to me. They are submitting an application for shop local grant money. And they wondered if we had any projects that we would like to um, put in on their application. Uh, I spoke with a lady about this wrap and she said that it would absolutely be something we could apply for. So on their grant submission, they're going to request $5,000. The only thing with the grant is that you cannot double up on funding. So if we were to get that money, we can't use the municipality's money and the grant money. So um, I don't know if we want to maybe consider another project that could be done um, with the municipality's money if if we get approved for this grant or um, it's just something to maybe talk about in the next couple of weeks. I think we should hear back relatively quick. Um, closing, I believe, is in one week. So after tonight's meeting, I have to get my report together to send to her and to uh, go to council as well. Um, so I think that that's it. So I will share my screen again here. And this is the sample concept that I had made up. Um, so the design cost is $250. Um, I've asked for clarification a couple times on um, if we want to make some tweaks to this, uh, what, would, what would it cost? And I'm not 100% sure if she's saying if we have to, if we want to make some changes, it's included in the 250 or if you're wanting like a second mock-up, it's going to cost another 250. So I've asked for clarification a couple times and I, I don't have it tonight. So I apologize that I can't confirm. However, um, this is the first mock-up that I had made. So I just put the logo at the top. Uh, the board really liked the QR code. And we've got our shop local and then um, our the half of our logo um, and then our website at the bottom. When we were decorating the light standards and I had showed members here tonight the wrap, um, a suggestion was made that there's a lot of blue from our um, logo down. So if we added some like a pop of color or a textured background, um, maybe like the um, grass from the wetlands, like something a little bit different and then swap around the shop local words with the QR code because on the light standards, we did notice that there's about, I'm gonna say probably a, a four inch um, piece of metal uh, where I'm assuming earth would have to open, like open up to get into the light standard if they had to do any repairs. So we're gonna have to like move the wrap up a little bit on the light standard. So 
once you move the wrap up, that QR code is above my height. So um, any other short people would struggle to scan that QR code. So um, it was suggested that we just swap those two around. Um, so for tonight, um, I, I would like any feedback on this wrap. If there's changes you want made, I can go back and get clarification on design cost. And again, if it's something that we wanna pursue ordering, if we could put that resolution forward and then I will speak to the um, members that are missing tonight. And I guess we can confirm that vote later on. Uh, so I, if Jeff's there, I have a really quick question, Jeff. Um, will we moving forward have to get permission from Erie Thames for these? I know we will go through council and get the permissions once we have everything ordered, but will we have to have Nicholas or you reach out to Earth? Okay, uh, I think it's a very, I think it's a very straightforward request. We can put you as soon as council says they're interested, we can reach out to Jeff Nicholson and make sure that it's okay. And I have a text number, so okay. it's an easy I call. Eerie Thames. I meant, or I meant, I meant Earth. Earth. Yeah, I but I know who you mean. So same company and just different name, um, but certainly we have a contact that we can reach out to and get a very, I think, definitive and quick answer from. Yeah, I don't think that'll be a no. You see them all over the place, but I just think as a courtesy. We should maybe put that through, Jeff, that um, once, if I forget to mention it at council to remind yeah. you, that and we should just courtesy through to. Yeah, and if we can get the report and actually share it with Mike uh, Kramer before council, and, and, you know, we'll just remember when it gets on the council agenda that we get it to Mike in case Mike has any um, worries or something that we need to work around, because I'm sure council is going to wonder what the operations manager thinks, so. Okay. Trish, are you okay with that when you send the report tomorrow yep. or whatever to do that? Thanks. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So nice looking stuff. It is. Yeah. We the the sample had some beautiful flowers and bright stuff on the bottom, which sparked all of us that put the bows up. How pretty and how eye popping it was. So the, it'll look. It'll really dress up our downtown. Um, let's start with then. I guess we'll work on a resolution here. Um, we'll do what we can do at this level, and then we'll have Trish sort of get some general consensus from everybody else and unfortunately we don't meet again till September but if we can get the ball rolling that would be that's what I think I'd like to do tonight so we'll look for a mover and a seconder for the resolution and uh, all in favor then what is the resolution I was just going to say um, what do you want the resolution to be because there's there's three avenues is right sorry yeah we we either, the BIA is paying for it all yourself, the BIA is going to be subsidized by the municipality with the beautification grant, and I believe Jeff um, said half. Maybe Jeff, if you could confirm that. I, th I think. Sorry guys, I jumped, I jumped the gun. Half, half was a bit rich from the uh, Main Street grant. I was thinking we were, we were actually looking at probably 1500 to $2,000. Okay, that's about half. Yep. Okay, yep. well then you're good. It's just yep. not half of what I got left in Main Street. That's all. All right, perfect. Okay. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, or the option is also um, that we're, like we are still going to move forward with this grant application with the Stratford Chamber of Commerce, so they might be fully covered by the chamber. So I don't know if you want to just put a resolution forward to move forward with the project. Um, and then I can list the funding options or I don't know how I, you want to. I think at this point, let's get the resolution. Let's get this moving forward to council. Um, we can do, we can sort of do the fine details um, as we move along. It, let's start with just the simple resolution that this is a project that we would like to, we would like to get approval from council for and move forward. And then when we're all done here, we can sort of have some discussion because if we are lucky enough to get both grants we need to very quickly decide what we're going to do with all our money is everybody okay with that or do you want to tweak it a little bit yeah i think we could i think we could make a resolution to to go ahead with the project um with funding to be determined can we can we say yes. it like that because I'd like to throw it out to the rest um, that if to be prepared, since there is a timeline for the money from the town, um, that we all have had a wish list of projects for quite some time. We're looking at maybe $1,500. 
Um, we can't double up the we can't double up the grants, unfortunately. Um, so it'd be nice to have a sidebar project to quick to move forward once we know what the funding is. I think Trish said the turnaround for the uh, Chamber of Commerce funding is quite quick. So, all right. So Bert, are you still okay with uh, moving that resolution that we are going to go forward and ask permissions from Council? Okay, and Heather, you're yes. okay with seconding that? Sorry, turned myself off. Turned myself off. Oh, waving. As far as we can carry it, that's uh, that is carried for now. Um, that, um, does that is this in the package of that you sent around for the meeting, Trish? This picture. Um, I don't believe it is, but I can send that so to you tonight. I know that Steve Steve was kind of wondering what was we were talking about I think when we were talking about the wraps so I think if you sent if this gets sent with the with the resolution and that we're looking for their support right that that, right that yeah. would give them a better idea of what we're what we have in mind yeah so I did send um when he inquired about it I sent the uh, town of Prescott one so that he had a visual but now that we have one of ours I'll get this out with the resolution to get support you should send on the one with the picture with bird in it I, I will do that because I have that on my phone. Because that's actually, it's that, that one I think would, would make it sell really. Yes. Yeah. Mm, I'd have to see the picture. Just, just, because, just because Bert's in it. If not. Right. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's usually not a selling feature. <laughs> see, and him holding it, he's the poster boy. The Bert, the poster boy for our BIA. Um, okay. Um, anything else on the decorations? We're good. Okay, let's uh, let's just move forward here. Uh, spring street party sidewalk sale event, something that we have been discussing for months and months and months in hopes of um, stage one, two, three getting here quickly. So I'll leave it to Trish to report. Um, yes, so uh, Sherry took the words right out of my mouth. So we've been talking about pivoting the Spring Street Party to a possible sidewalk sale event. We talked about June um, and then jumped to maybe having it in July. Um, as it stands right now, we have nothing planned for the summer. So I know one of my main focuses is I've been working a lot on the website. Um, I've cleaned up a bunch of, of pages and whatnot. So I can continue with that project and getting our content up online. However, I don't know if you want to run any events or anything like that. Um, judging off of our work plan, the next item that we have planned is uh, Ladies Night in September as a TBD. So um, I don't know what everybody's thoughts are on, on having a sidewalk sale event. I know people are starting to have garage sales, so maybe we could promote a uh, if, if it's okay with the municipality, we would promote a, a townwide garage sale weekend and then loop in the businesses with sidewalk sales or something like we would normally do in May. But what's the board's thoughts? I don't, I think, I think like anything else, um, we would have trouble getting all the businesses to like, I think it's up to them to to have the say so. Do you know what I mean? Like the main street businesses. I mean, yeah. we could, we can promote the heck out of it, but if they don't want to have a sidewalk sale, they're not going to. Yeah. I'd say we throw a poll out to see if they're interested because if we can't get more than a few on board, it's really kind of pointless. That's right. That's. Yeah, I think that's all very fair um, insight. Um, do we just, yeah, a poll is a good idea. So see if you get any answers back. Do we wait and maybe do something in September and time yeah. to just do the ladies' night and sort of skip if we don't get much? Because I think we could try for the fair weekend. A sidewalk sale is a sidewalk sale. If we as a BIA don't add added benefit to it by clowns and music and you know things that yeah. make it a big to do is it's just a sidewalk sale yeah all right i'll put out a poll then to see if anybody would be interested and i mean you could still do a i guess a, a summer sidewalk sale party if businesses are interested and you could drum up some stuff but i know that our money is getting a bit 
um, low. And I know that if come November, you know, we've hit our vaccination rates, then I think that we were all in agreement. We would like to move forward with a big Christmas street party. So yeah. um, maybe we try the sidewalk sale spring event next year and just put it off for a year. Um, but I will put that poll out and see what I get back. Maybe have the poll say, are you interested in a late summer, early fall sidewalk sale or a, you know, large Christmas, annual Christmas street party, which see what you get, see if we get any answers or larger. Okay. Um, so then the next piece, yes, Jeff touched on was the parking bylaw. Um, so the municipality is working towards rewriting the parking bylaw, um, some of it, and has asked for some input from the BIA board and the members of the BIA. So currently there's no signage downtown that restricts the hours of parking. Um, I did see some old photos of the downtown before the big dig and there were, or there was signage up there. So um, I just don't think it ever got put back up when they redid downtown. Um, so because there is no signage, the enforceable parking time right now is 12 hours. And I believe the window is from November 1st to March 31st. I believe that's what the clerk said. Um, so the only spots uh, where downtown has restricted um, the parking time is on, I really hope I get this right, but it's, there's two hour signed parking on the east side, on the, on the east side of St. Andrews Street, which is on the, on the south side of Ontario, and then on St. Andrews Street on the east and west side on the north side of St. Andrew. A little bit confusing, but basically on St. Andrew, there's um, two hour parking. And then in front of the Cenotaph, and I believe maybe beside the post office actually, are 15 minute slots. So that's really the only timed parking that's in the downtown right now. So what the clerk is asking for our input on is, uh, is the BIA members and the board interested in a certain amount of hours where um, people would be okay to park downtown, um, like a time limit to get signage up. So some other BIAs and towns I noticed on their Facebook pages or websites uh, usually do three to four hours parking downtown. Um, so if somebody was working an eight hour day and happened to park in front of a business, it would allow them time to move their car once. Um, in an idealistic world, we'd like to get them off Main Street so that it's only for shoppers. But um, yeah, currently they can only enforce a 12 hour parameter. So uh, is the board open to requesting a certain amount of hours or any input? Trish, could I, could I just add one piece? I think, yes. um, I think I would like to suggest a recommendation that we'd like you to maybe consider in making your comment so that's not too unstructured. And I think we, we feel, um, I feel that three hour parking on the main street is about the right number. Um, so I think, you know, we're kind of on the same page there and then the 15 minute spots. And, um, and so that's kind of what we would bring forward. And of course there will be an opportunity for feedback on this. I think we're just, um, what we're going to do is we're going to post the proposed amendments to the parking bylaw on Monday, the 12th, but we'll come back and have council approve them. Um, I think at the August meeting or the September meeting. So, you know, you're going to get a chance to come back, but we're just getting your input now. Yeah. Um, what's our plan for enforcement will be the question that most businesses are going to have. That's right. We can, make it, we can make it, we can make it three hours or make four hours and nobody's going to come and, and ticket them yeah. then, what, you know. So it's a great question. Um, we are also doing work on how we're planning to enforce. We, uh, we have uh, been planning to put out um, uh, requests for proposals for enforcement services because currently 25% of our building inspectors time is spent doing enforcement. And uh, frankly, with building activity up almost double, the math doesn't work for us to manage our staff. And really, um, it's, it's not the best use of uh, the resources with the way the building code's changing. So we want to change the enforcement model. 
Um, I really think though, there is a very, very fine line between um, rigid enforcement and kind of complaint-based enforcement and education. And I think the style that you will see out of my staff and my office would be much more of an education first and then moving into complaints and, and repeat offenders. So not gonna take this as an opportunity to try to generate revenue if that's the concern, but we're also not gonna continue to ignore bad behavior. So does everybody else feel that the three hours, three hours is what popped into my mind. You gotta well. start somewhere. Um, you know, I'm just thinking from how long are we shopping downtown, you know, but when you start getting into hair appointments that are two hours and maybe a stop at a pharmacy or a store or you got an appointment at the bank and then you do a little shopping, I think three hours is pretty, yeah, it's a good start. Jerry, I asked, I asked um, our new clerk how long it takes to get foils done. And uh, he said he didn't know. And I, I, I figured that was your measure right there. But apparently, I think they know that's some science. I think so. It is two hours is fair. And then you've got to leave your ladies time to go get that coffee and sandwich and maybe shop at one of the local stores when they're all done. So three hours is a pretty fair. Three, three sounds fair. right. Good. Yeah, I think that's going to be the main question from most business owners is, is, you know, a sign is great, throw them up all over. But if we're not going to have some sort of plan in place that we're actually going to be able to follow through with, then it's just a neat point. So. Okay, perfect. So I'll pass on to the clerk that we're in agreement with the three hours, which, like Jeff said, that's what they were kind of um working towards anyways. And then Dan did mention that um, they're working on the enforcement piece like Jeff covered off. So um, we will get there. So is that just for Main Street? Um, it's, it falls within the whole BIA boundary from what I understood from the clerk. Okay. So um, St. Saint, Saint Andrew and the, the Main Street. And then, but sorry, your street as well. Je Jeff, the parking the parking be between my building and the uh, car wash is that is that municipal? Is it free? Is it what? That's like, what is it, what's it classified? That's, that's a great question. No, no, uh, not. no we're not. talking about the Friendship Center parking lot. So, oh, I would that's the that. Friendship. No, no, yeah, I'm talking about the. No, no, no I'm talking about between my build, the Advocate Building, and the car wash. Oh, oh. I'm pretty sure if you look at the. At the plan that Godfather's owns that from street my to street. Lawyer, no, my lawyer said it's town. It's town. Oh, okay. There's it's a right region. away. There's a little right away in behind, in beside. Yep, but that's between. That's There's over further right towards the car wash. No, that's behind my building. I'm talking about beside my building. Yeah. My lawyer and said it that comes it comes from that little right away. It comes around beside your building. Yeah, but it building. it's closer to the car wash. That piece. I know what she's talking about. I thought the old municipal plan showed that as being owned by Godfather's. Uh, yeah, well, I tell you what my what my lawyer said. Oh, you could be right. I'm just I'm just going back years ago. I thought that was owned by Godfathers, but but somebody else yeah. town at, at town will know that. So here's so the thing. That, does that fall under Does that fall under public parking? Like, Hang on, like, we'll let let Jeff answer that. I think well, it's no, it's great, and so I'll try to answer the question, Heather, because I know where you're heading. I, I think you're right on. This is exactly it. There are a number of these kind of anomalies, and frankly. <laughs> I can't, I, I could probably check two or three sources and get two or three different answers. So we're going to have to go back to the source. We're going to get those questions. That's why we're putting the proposal out and going to let it steep for a month or a month and a half, because we also need to know where we're going to put signs. And we just get need to get a little more serious about putting signs up so we can enforce the bylaw if we see a complaint. We've been very pragmatic around here about everybody seems to follow the rules, but I think you reach a point where you got to set yourself up in case you have people that are not complying and we get complaints. And so that's what we're moving to. And Heather, your question is one of the ones that we anticipate and I don't know the answer. Okay. Because so I'm sure you're going to get the same with the chunk behind BJ's, that Parmalat chunk versus <laughs> the storage <laughs> building versus behind Howard Culligan's. All that is such a gray yep. area back in there. I'm sure you've got all that to deal with too. So. 
Okay, anything else, Trish? Um, so the last piece is the Perth County Snapshot Program that Ashley touched on. So again, um, they ran this program for businesses to um, register in essence to get a free, free photography package um, in the help of you know rebuilding this year. Uh, there was a really great response that came out of Mitchell, which was good to hear. Um, and then they had some spots that were left open. So they had, you know, given them or, or reached out to the neighboring BIAs and we were one of them. So I had emailed the board for some ideas on uh, possible photos that we would like to have taken. Uh, I got a response from one um, listing all the ball diamonds, soccer fields, wetlands, walking trails, any land available for development, both residential and industrial, um, as well as some of the building that's going on now. And then the downtown areas, storefronts, maybe from different angles. So um, we have the photographer for one hour. And some things that other BIAs are doing are uh, refresh headshots of the board, uh, scenery of their town, some storefronts, or their cenotaph if it's kind of located um, near the BIA. So my question to the board again is, what would you like to see photographed? And um, I like the idea of the headshots of the board so we all have nice, fresh, um, clean photos. <laughs> However, I know people don't like to have their picture taken. Uh, well, the we've got Bird already with from your phone. We just use him, our poster boy, Bird. So we're good there. I get a haircut first. <laughs> don't we all? <laughs> Um, so I, but for, for the fact that we only have her for one hour, I don't know. And, um, we have an election year in 2022. I don't know if headshots are really worth the time and effort. If we wanted to do different things around Mitchell to help promote it. So these photographs will be sent to us and Perth County. So Perth County can use the material. We can use the material on anything and everything, um, so fire away with your ideas. Well, I would need the whole hour myself. <laughs> so that's out. <laughs> you have to you have to get ready before the session. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I don't take good pictures. Um, I'm not sure we need the board necessarily. No, I think I think no. because it's an hour. I think that's going to be too much to do. Ball diamonds, all that. Um, I, I would like to see some different shots of Main Street. So one of the things I did ask her was, so if we don't pursue the headshot option, then she'll come into town at any given time by herself. Nobody has to meet her. She'll just come in and take the pictures if I give her a list. Um, one of the things I asked her is if she could possibly pit, play Frogger and stand in the middle of the road and get a nice shot up towards mm -hmm. Perth County and then turn around and get a nice shot towards um, all the way up to Monteith where it's Phillips or maybe stand at either end and get a photo as well. Um, we don't have a lot of good photos that show as much of the main street as we can get. And so that was one thing I said, I, I really kind of hope we could get something like that. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's the, that's the way to go. So the list that I just read, plus some shots of the downtown strip as best as she can get as many stores as possible sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to eat up your hour. I think yeah. so too. Um, and the information center is another one. Uh, it's not far, but it's kind of within the BIA there. So, um, okay. What I'll do is I'll compile the list uh, one more time and send it out to the board. Uh, I would like to get back to her for Friday and then she's going to try and schedule something, I believe still in July, she's trying to fit it in. So um, the sooner I can get back to her with the, the list, the better would be good. So that's all I have for tonight. I don't know if there's anything else that anybody had questions on or anything. Okay. Okay. So um that's it for trish uh new business anybody have anything um i don't want to spend a lot of time we're pretty much done the meeting um anything new anything questions concerns i don't know if it's new but i was talking with the gentleman that's opening the uh the business in the hicks house they're renovating like crazy right now but other than that uh i saw that yesterday
trying to think what else there was, but that was the one I was just chatting with him for about 15 minutes about uh, opening plans. So I don't know, Trish, if you've had a chance to stop in and chat with them one of these days, but uh, it looks like they're going to be renovating there for a few days. It's a pizza, I, it's a pizza place, right? Pizza Hut. Yeah, Pizza Hut. Okay, it's a Pizza Hut. It's a okay. small one when I was chatting with the individual. So. Um, Trish just reminding me that we do have a couple of quick uh, housekeeping things to talk about things um, Bert had mentioned about putting under new business. And one was um, BIA Bucks program. We should tackle that sooner rather than later. We're not going to meet again in September. So do you want to speak on it, Trish, a little bit? Or what were your concerns about it, Bert? You had mentioned it to us that we should, we should tackle it was, that sooner now. And since we don't meet until September, we should probably... Yep. It was more to if we were going to revamp, uh, we talked about doing uh, fives and tens and twenties, not Tris, if I remember correctly. Okay, Because yep. right now we just have tens. So um, one of the other concerns from the banks dealing with that, I had chatted with one of the other banks that uh, we hope to reach out with is always a concern of this um, uh, being able to fake one. So I had reached out to North Perth, um, the Chambers of Commerce to see how they do theirs and they've moved ahead with the fives and tens and the twenties. Um, and they have another company that deals with it. So I just thought I, I reached out to them and they'd be more than interested to give us a, a price quote on it, but it's more to see if we want to, to go that route versus just running with a $10 bill. So, I mean, it wouldn't be that hard to get it done. I could reach out, get the price quotes for September, and their they're relatively turnaround is fairly quick. Um, but it's a more secure, like we've been running, the current one we've been running with isn't quite as, it's not that we really need to be secure, but if we're going to make some changes to it, it never hurts to build in some tweaks to make sure that people aren't photocopying them and doing anything like that. So that's why I reached out to them. The two companies I've dealt with before can do it. It's just to get the right specs. And if we want to go ahead with a 5, 10, and 20 style um, BIA dollar. And the other thing, um, the other thing was that you'd, we'd have to figure out with the denominations is we used to have the two programs, uh, two programs, but in one. So you have your Christmas promotion that typically went November to January, which was your 10% off. And then the BIA bucks that are available all year round were um, the 10s and the 25s. So they used to be the $10 could be purchased between those three months at TD. And then whatever was left over after the promotion at TD and the $25 ones came to the municipal office to be sold. So I think the whole program needs to be looked at. I don't know that it's really all up for discussion tonight. I think it's a lot to try to get in in a few minutes, but I guess to get some base points, this can be something I can tackle in July as well. I think we can still we use the five? same style of dollar on both, but uh, it's just a matter of how we want to move ahead with it. It's One thing I noticed, if I could just chime in as the eavesdropper. Um, so if someone gifts you the BIA box and you don't spend them all, you get your change back in regular It's treated change. as real money, yes. Yeah, so... Um, but And that wouldn't change even if you had smaller denominations of it? No, 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 because no. so they're you, used you, as cash. If you went in with the five dollars and bought a candy bar for a buck, you, you'd get your four dollars real Canadian cash as change. Yeah. Well, how do we feel about um, you know just giving the direction to her to look into the, the company that you were talking about? The, the, yeah, I can get some more details and get some price quotes for it so that we're ready for the September meeting versus kind of picking our noses at the September meeting and starting again. So we'll put this out there and I'm not sure if anybody's watching us live or we'll go back and watch us later. But um, if anyone has any suggestions, improvements, ideas as far as the BIA box go, please email Trish with your thoughts and ideas and we will put it on the agenda for a discussion topic in September to make a final decision or make some decision. Yep. And Bert, yeah. you had mentioned another new business of branding. 
we talked about oh it. yeah we we right. never really finished uh, it came up in that one conversation a few months back and we we started but I, I i think the point was we never actually truly finished it all off now trish kind of felt we were closer to done than i thought we were but it's just a matter if if we need to out with the old and in with the new as i had suggested so it's time to say say, say if we're going to flush out all the old stuff then let's get rid of it and move on with the new I think we got most of the new stuff there, but I think it's time to flush the old stuff out and be done with it. Yeah, so we had moved away from uh, the Mitchell BIA website and um, had, had our website formed with the municipalities page. So I update that. And again, that's a project I've been working on. I've made a bunch of updates. We used to have sub pages upon sub pages, and I've rolled them all up into fewer clicks because it was pretty, it, it was it was a lot of clicking um, to get around. So um, that's been cleaned up. So obviously that all has our new brand of stuff. Our BIA Bucks that went out last year has our new logo. I believe they did the year before as well. Um, window stickers were printed for the BIA Bucks program and they were delivered to all businesses. Now I did leave, I did notice when I'm going downtown shopping, there are some businesses that haven't changed them yet. Um, I did leave every business was given a new sticker. So I can't, I can't force their hand to change the old one for the new one, but they have all been given them. Um, and I still have a bunch as well here at the office that I if someone is watching and doesn't have an updated one, I can bring that um, over as quickly as as you need it. Um, and the only outstanding branding piece that I could think of really is the mitchellbia.ca domain. So that was handed over to us a year ago. Um, we paid for it last year. It will be up for renewal again, I believe in December. Um, but that I think that Bert is one of the main things that you were talking about is kind of outstanding is what do we do with that domain? It's not, it's not pointing anywhere right now. It's literally just sitting in our back pocket. Yeah, it's just a matter of if we're moving ahead, if we're going to keep it, let's figure out what we're doing with it. And if we're going to abandon it, then I would actually probably still register it for a couple of years just because uh, to make sure nothing strange happens to it. But it's just a matter of once we set the direction, then it's done. We don't have, we don't keep rehashing stuff over and over again. Well, that's where I'm sitting with it. It's just, we just need to finish it off. I hate always having to come back to stuff that to me should have been left in the past. Yeah. So I guess, um, I don't know, Sherry or Heather, I don't know what, what to do with it. Yeah. Okay. I think that's fair. Um, Works for me. I'm good. Okay. One quick thing I think of under new business, I don't want to spend a lot of time. We'll try to wrap up here. Um, just off the top of your heads, shoot out quick because Trish writes down here, if we do get extra money here in the next week or two, what is some projects that we have been talking about? Just we're not going to hash details. Let's just throw out some, and then we'll we'll move forward. She'll send out an email. She'll ask her stuff. But if oh. anything off your head that we are wish list. Seating downtown. More more a couple more seats downtown. Oh, you said off the head. I'm thinking like that's <laughs> like one of yeah, the. I don't want to discuss details. I don't want to discuss details. I don't want to move. Additional that seating downtown. Meeting. Just something. Well, the water water filling station. Is that like I that's. Yeah, water fill station. It hasn't bounced around, but I, I don't know where it's yeah. sitting right now. It's sitting nowhere, so that's a good one. Uh, fixed I, bicycle stands. Oh, maybe enhanced bicycle stands. Forget the fixed word. Yeah, <laughs> Those several brand, of them broken off. branded ones. Maybe nice brand. Yeah. Uh, one, one nice branded bicycle stand. And where's metal, um, you know, there's the, uh, his last name is Brace. Like he does metals. Like somebody oh, here yep. can make one for us, right? Nice branded. Uh, West Perth or, or Mitchell, 
you know, downtown BIA. Another option is um, when Dustin and I walked Main Street, there's a couple like junction boxes or electrical boxes. We could maybe um, go to Schneider's graphics. He could potentially wrap the boxes with yeah. some something with our branding as well. Yeah, I've seen them do that at the our, arena. That That's would a fit in idea. our wrap. That would fit in our wrap that we're applying for. Yeah. I would ask you if you have a little extra money to help support replacing the banners. I know the banners are lasting longer and the BIA has split the cost with the municipality in the past. We were going to use the main street money, but um, if there's a little kicking around, I would ask for some help. You know, we, we can certainly work with you on that kind of a back and forth. We've talked about the banners for quite some time. So that's definitely a, a good one if, too. If you redo the banners with the heron on it, can you, come up with a different color scheme that makes them pop a little more. The, the white on blue kind of disappeared. Okay. Good. It uh, look nice. It's just, they don't good show very advice. Well. Okay. Good advice. So, or we can actually perhaps put them in the same format as the maple leaf ones where they are that mesh material. They'll last longer and they'll pop longer. Well, so, yeah, that's the one thing the four of us noticed. Um, it was the four of us that put the bows up. So yep. we had a chat as we stood and looked at everything downtown and we are really missing color. Yeah. Even as our flowers this year, the purple is, is lovely and gorgeous and I, I like it. But as I drove through um, Grand Bend today and Hensel today and a few other places on my way home from Grand Bend and I went to London, we're missing color. Like bright I know flowers, there was a bright flags, things that make you really want to stop even the seating i know there was a push for black and brown and it, it i knew what i know what they're getting at when they did it but it just keeps the downtown looking bland our benches need to be a bright blue they need to be the town bright blue, yeah, sure, blue works for me I just, we it just can't always be black and it just yeah. can't always be black we don't have color downtown we don't have any pop so the when it comes to the seating piece, that is a bylaw change. Um, I know because yeah, because in this yeah, in the sidewalk and cafe policy, if we were outside of COVID um, changes, um, there is restriction on color. So just just and that needs to go. That just was a really bland. I know what they were thinking, but it was a it was a bad idea. We need lots of color. Yep. Is that something that we can ask a uh, council level to change, or is that a can of worms, Jeff? Think I, I, think, I, I make a re yeah. recommendation to, to review it. I think what you want to do is you want to come with a proposal, not an open question. Um, so I think you want to kick it around, perhaps not in tonight's meeting, but you want to think about it. And I think you also want to think about too much color and where it leads you. So I still <laughs> think you want your brand colors. Um, I think the black uh, color scheme was very logical from the perspective of not having this look like a circus, but at the same time, your desire for more color demonstrates that there has got to be some middle ground. Okay, we can put that on the agenda for September. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind the black benches yeah. or making the benches a, a dark, a, a nice blue that fits in our color scheme. But I, now that you mentioned it that way, Jeff, it does make a lot of sense. We don't want pinks, yeah. purples, yellows, oranges, but I yeah. do think we need, we need some color. Okay, thanks. If there's nothing else, motion to adjourn. 723. Everybody. Okay. Bert and Heather. Good night, everybody.